All right, welcome back. I'm glad you've stopped by because today we're going to talk about a bag, a bag that has been fumbled. And I think in cases like this, the point is, right, the bag has been fumbled, but the ingredients, whatever is inside the bag is actually pretty damn good. And it's the kind of thing that you'd really want. So today, right, we're going to be talking about this thing called Plunderstorm that Blizzard did with World of Warcraft. And it's funny because, you know, if this was happening in Diablo or Overwatch, I'm sure that there would be multiple $40 skins with hundreds of percent of value. In this case, though, it's uh, got no additional monetization stuff and uh, it's a new mode that they put in. I actually think it's pretty damn amazing. The thing is, though, there's a reason why I'm calling it a bit of a fumbled bag. And actually, part of the reason why I'm doing this video is honestly because I kind of want to pressure them to uh, to do a few things. And I know that's pretty uh, self-righteous, maybe even a little bit asshole-ish, but I think you might think it interesting. And I've got a feeling quite a few people may actually agree with me. This is more of a chill sort of chatting video. I'm just going to be putting some footage of the gameplay of Plunderstorm in the background of this video. So if you're kind of interested in what I'm talking about, take a look at the footage and uh, see if it's the sort of thing that appeals to you. Now, right, Plunderstorm happened. And initially, I will admit some people's reactions like, I get it absolutely hilarious. I mean, with Heroes of the Storm, how late was Blizzard to uh, to the MOBA, right? And here they are doing a battle royale within the world of Warcraft. And it's like, uh, uh, boys, uh, PUBG came out in 2017. We're a little bit late. I mean, hell, even if you're high res and you're, you know, remember high res with uh, oh, Realm Royale, where they're like, oh, what's that? This genre is doing good. Let's make a game. See if it happens. Maybe we'll support it afterwards. Um, so yes, it is honestly absolutely hilarious. That being said, it does actually give us a little bit of an insight into some development stuff with the World of Warcraft team. So uh, they do a lot of game jams and that sort of thing internally. They have this experimental gameplay team. They are the people who are responsible for Season of Discovery for WoW Classic. Season of Discovery, by the way, is like, just if you're not aware, it has been very, very, very well received. Um, I think not by all of the original Classic crowd, but it really does seem that it's got its own extremely healthy player base. So this experimental gameplay team, they've shown their shops. They've shown they can do things, right? So I'm going to talk a little bit about the anger and the rage within some of the World of Warcraft player base. Um, but I think what's more important is talking about how this is a surprisingly fumbled bag, uh, you know, so to say, because Plunderstorm is, uh, it's not free. It is playable within World of Warcraft, all you need is a subscription. You don't actually need a max level character or even any character in World of Warcraft. You just download the client and there's like a thing where you just click the other game mode, you load in, you can customize a character for Plunderstorm and basically then just away you go. For a TLDR in the gameplay, you basically, you, you kill dudes, you level up, right? It's basically like creeping almost in a, you know, a MOBA or something like that. So you kill NPCs, it's, it's PvPVE right? It's PvEVP. So you kill a bunch of enemies, that sort of thing. You level up, you get abilities, you kind of work out what sort of loadout that you want, and you can go and you can kill other players. But the thing is, this is a World of Warcraft that actually does not play like regular WoW. And that was the thing that was really fascinating to me. Now, do you remember way back in the day, let's say uh, 2010, we were looking at Guild Wars 2 and people were pretty damn jazzed at the idea that in Guild Wars 2, if you hit the attack button, your character just, you know, swings a sword. And should an enemy happen to be with uh, within the area covered by your sword, they will take damage. Yes, there is tab targeting, but the way the abilities work basically means the tab targeting, like it, you don't really need it because it's kind of happening physically. So within Blunderstorm, you have this basic attack. Whenever you hit it, you just, you know, you do an attack. And if there's an enemy in front of you, they'll be hit by your attack. Your enemies, you know, they will charge up sort of an attack and then they'll do it so that you can dodge it. So actually, it's way more simple in terms of button presses, but many people would say that it's more uh, engaging. I mean, you look at a hard game and there's different types of hard. I mean, how many inputs do you have in a Souls-like game? Not that many, but they matter. So with World of Warcraft, often, you know, how many inputs does a class have? Loads of them. Congratulations, you're getting repetitive strain disorder um, or injury, whatever. Uh, whereas this, it, it basically feels like it's, you know, a little bit more in that, um, I don't want to say Dark Soulsy direction, that's a silly thing, but MOBA inspired. I suppose, um, I remember my time playing Smite quite fondly. Maybe some of my like of Smite is actually mapping on quite well here. The point basically is, the gameplay is really solid. I'll talk about that in a minute. And the reason why this is a very fumbled bag is, um, why is this not being used as a gateway 
right? A gateway to more people playing World of Warcraft. This, is, and I know you're going to say like, Michael, it's not innovative to do a battle royale. No, doing a battle royale, not an innovative thing now. But within the context of World of Warcraft, I actually think that this is pretty innovative. The game feel, the way it actually plays, the way that uh, they've, they've really just changed up how it feels. Yet, you're still there. You're in the Arathi Highlands. You're in Azeroth doing Azeroth things, killing, you know, big strong guard paladin dudes and, you know, hordes. I don't know, big torrents and stuff. Like, it still feels like that Warcraft thing, but in a way, it's way more accessible, way more approachable, because you've got that lower number of abilities. So the reason why I'm calling this an extremely fumbled bag is what they essentially did, right, is they put a bunch of cosmetic rewards on it for both Wrath Classic and for, like, regular modern World of Warcraft, okay? And uh, th that's kind of the thing. You just, you know, you do it, you get your rewards, and uh, you're, you're sort of done, and it's cosmetic stuff. And to me... This has created a number of problems, but it's also, I think, far more importantly, missed out on a massive opportunity. There's been a lot of buzz, I, I think, around content creators, and uh, at least some of the classic community I know have really enjoyed this. It seems to be a bit more divided amongst the modern community, but I think this is the sort of thing that is newsworthy, um, newsworthy to the point where people would want to go and check it out. But the problem is, right, if they go and they check this out, they've got to pay first. Now, this is only an event that is there for six weeks. They've overtly framed it as an experiment. Well, the developers have. The marketing has been all time-limited event, play it now, and all of that stuff that is so tiresome, man. Which, uh, you know, that kind of thing is a shame. I don't like how this was marketed. I'm pretty sure the people who worked on it don't like how this was marketed, but you know how it is with marketing, right? Um, I think we all roll our eye at that kind of thing. Point is, this is one of the most fumbled bags in World of Warcraft's recent history, because this feels new, this feels fresh, yet for somebody who is curious about Azeroth, who is curious about the Warcraft franchise, this would be a fairly innovative way, a fairly interesting way to dip your toes in, have a bit of a bash, and then go see what the real thing is like. Yet, there is no free weekend. There is no, like, you know, free trial that lets you play this. Like, WoW has a free trial. That's the thing that's crazy to me. I believe the game is, like, free to play up to level 20. You cannot do this on a trial account. If Blizzard literally just, I mean, they could probably do this with a simple flag in their back end, you know? Like, can a trial account click in this thing? If so, away you go. And the reason why this has frustrated me, I will admit, is, you know, what do I care about? I care about the area under the curve. And you're, you're probably thinking, what curve? What are we talking about, Michael? Well, you know, you have your subscribers, right? And a spike is really good. But if a spike goes up like that, you know, it's a nice little spike. But the area under the curve is, you know, long, thin strip. Whereas if you just get a few more people in and, you know, those numbers are better for a longer time, the area under the curve, the long-term impact is far better. And one of the things that I think has made me happy recently is I think amongst the gaming audience, we are having more and more and more of an understanding of the long-term matters, right? Like prioritizing the short-term, it, it doesn't hot work. I mean, even just look at the staff at Bungie who now looking at the incentive packages of the leadership of the company are kind of thinking like, hang on a second, there's not really a long-term plan here. They're just going to be getting out in 2026 whenever, you know, the, the final money from, uh, you know, from the sale of Bungie to Sony, um, whenever, like, the final stages of that happens. Um, and, you know, all of the stuff where it's like, ah, oh, the quarterly earnings report has damaged the health of the game. So this has been frustrating to me because, you know what? Like, you, you could have got more people into the game. And you would have made less money because I'm sure some people will re-up their sub to play this right now. But like, this is okay at activating their current audience. I say okay because it's not great. It's okay at activating their current audience, but it's actually pretty badly done to activate a new audience. Now, what I at the very minimum would want to see is they're doing this creator clash thing in the WoW community, I think everybody's joking that Asmongold and Liquid Max will, you know, fight each other uh, in Plunderstorm finally and I don't know, squash their beef, whatever. Whenever that's happening and there's all these big streamers playing it, if they do not do a free weekend or flag this to be playable by everybody, I I mean, I'm not going to say that I'll eat my shoe because the chances of me eating my shoe would be too goddamn high, but I would be 
pretty disappointed and surprised. Because the thing is, for the existing World of Warcraft community, something like this is a really strange prospect. And actually, this teaches us so much about modern video games, okay? So if, you know, if you're like, I don't give a shit about WoW and uh, why am I still here, Michael? Like convince, you know, if you're saying, convince me to listen to the next five minutes of this video, um, you know, here's what I would basically say, right? You know the way we're all quite frustrated over the battle passes and uh, the way that, you know, say if you were playing Halo, you know, playing Halo Reach with the boys back in the day, you're in your credits, you got some gear, you upgrade, you know, you customize your Spartan and it feels good because you earn that shit. Whereas obviously, what is it nowadays? It is just a case of, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, buy it in the store, bozo, or buy the battle pass and then you'll get the thing. And that sucks. And that is, oh my God, this is uh, this is actually showing that more than most things that I've seen. And the bit that's fascinating to me is there's no monetization in this other than the subscription fee, okay? So I suppose big picture, would you rather that this was free to play and they did like one optional cosmetic thing? Um, or would you rather this was like, you know, the, the, the current way that it's done? I, I sort of wonder, but here's the thing. So as you do these matches, you get this currency called plunder, right? Now in a game, you get plunder for doing anything. So you kill a mob, you get plunder, kill a player, get plunder, open a chest, you get plunder. And that plunder, um, it'll also like give you XP and level up your character within the round of the match that you're playing. But basically that plunder is, uh, but basically that plunder is the currency that you keep in between, uh, you know, in between the runs of this game. Now what's weird is you don't spend that plunder like, at a vendor, the way that it works is the plunder is basically just reputation with this new faction. And there's 40 levels of reputation. It requires 100,000 plunder to go through all of them. And through this, basically, they've got some really nice armor, you know, some sort of recolor things, um, but basically cosmetic rewards. And here is the bit that is crazy. Loads of WoW players are furious about that. Okay. So, they're furious because I actually saw one forum post that said that they're being made to do unconsensual or non-consensual PVP, which, uh, you know, whenever you're using words with sort of, um, uh, you know, that obviously conjure up what that, you know, words, uh, you know, with consent, you know, what that sort of uh, draws up in the brain. It's like, wow, when you're talking about PVP, uh, you know, like that, I, I think you've lost perspective. Anyway, uh, my point is loads of people feel like they are forced to do this for rewards. And that's where it's like, it gets fascinating to me because why are you playing the game? Oh, you're doing it for the rewards. Why do you want the rewards? So, so I can have the rewards, but like you want the rewards from something you don't want to do. And I think it's really interesting. And it's a massive issue across video games, that thing of demotivation. How many, like in how many games have you just, you know, sort of been pursuing some of those big cosmetic lofty goals, whatever. You get them, and then you're like, it, oh, it, I have the thing, it's done, but you actually feel empty, you know? You feel empty because while you've been playing those matches, you haven't actually been enjoying them. And I remember playing PUBG with, uh, you know, with, with the boys back in 2017, and uh, I did not give a toss about any form of progression or loot boxes or any of that. I was just playing because for me, the idea of calling out coordinates and having to, you know, not silhouette yourself against the sun for me, that was just all of that tactical stuff that, uh, you know, d does definitely appeal to my uh, silly man brain. And I think it's great. Um, but I was playing it because I thought it was fun. And I remember a lot of the times in World of Warcraft where I have even demotivated myself. It's when I just like pursued, you know, I want to get this shiny thing, but I haven't actually enjoyed the process. And then what happens is you actually ruin your ability to, to enjoy that game, yet you still feel identity tied to that game in a way, because so much of what we do is, uh, is kind of related to, you know, our identity, how we see ourselves, how we perceive ourselves. Even I remember that, uh, you know, there's that pretty famous book about, you know, this book will make you quit smoking in X and basically Basically, the thesis of the book is you need to shift, you know, you need to shift your identity to be, you know, smoker to not smoker. And it's about actually how you see yourself. Um, so I think it's really interesting, I suppose, how a lot of these rewards, I suppose it really is just the over justification effect. You'll remember that being talked about actually in a GDC slide from uh, actually a World of Warcraft developer, but this is way back like a decade ago. Um, but essentially, right, my point here is, is all these people, they hate this mode. They feel like they're being forced to do it because it has rewards. 
But those rewards, I mean, ostensibly are there to provide a little bit of reinforcement and a little bit of a congratulations, you did the thing. You know, you maxed it out, you completed the reward track, and, uh, you know, you now get the title Plunder Lord. Now, for me, that's really cool. And for me, the Plunder Lord armor set is really cool. And I'm absolutely going to be putting that on some of my characters. The reason why is I have an emotional connection to that unlock. And that's an emotional connection because I strived to play that mode, to, in, you know, to actually get better at that mode. I was engaging with the game mechanics as designed by the game designers. And when I was doing that, I ended up having fun. And I challenged myself and I pushed myself and the reward was a byproduct of me enjoying myself. So now, whenever I look at that Plunder Lord gear, how am I going to think about that? I'm going to think, oh, I remember that week where I just went heavy in and I got that. And, uh, you know, wasn't that a fun game mode that I enjoyed? Now I have this, you know, cool little, you know, now I've got the t-shirt. But for a lot of people, they'll think, oh yeah, I really like that set, but man, the stuff they forced us to do to get that. And it's like, that is a fairly interesting example of reward design being problematic. Because they're trying to do a good reward, but then what happens when it appeals to people that the game mode isn't really designed for? And on the topic, I suppose, of, you know, the fumbling of bags, this is where I want to talk a little bit about how they actually marketed this. I think games marketing is one of those things that just hurts us all the time. I mean, marketing is a tricky thing anyway, but like how many times in video games do you just feel like, I mean, if you're a developer, uh, you know, and you're watching this, like how many times have you seen the marketing for your company or something like that? And you maybe think to yourself, ah, you know, they're really just going hard to go for everybody, but some of those people might not enjoy this game. Uh, or, you know, even examples when maybe a, a company does marketing for a game by hiring a Twitch streamer who is like just not going to enjoy it or, you know, silly stuff like that. In this case, right? an amazing example of how you frame things and how you manage perceptions. Uh, and, you know, I think this kind of thing is absolutely fascinating. Like, how do influence operations function? Because in a way, what is marketing? Marketing is an influence operation. Uh, of course, it's being used to get you to buy a product. But, you know, in other cases, such as, you know, sort of political things, maybe, uh, you know, war, that kind of thing. You know, what, what's going on there? Influence operations. So really, this is about how do you make an effective influence operation that achieves your aims? And when I look into how Blizzard did this, I think they really fumbled that bag hard as well. Basically what they said, right, is they, they have the roadmaps for the games. Now, I know there's a lot of eye rolls at roadmaps. I will say their 2023 roadmap, they absolutely delivered on. Just about everything seemed to be on time and was there. So they put this pirate flag on the roadmap and they said patch 10.2.6. Thing is, though, it technically is 10.2.6 because some things have happened in regular WoW Dragonflight. But the main thing is this plunderstorm. They framed it as a WoW patch. It technically comes in a wow patch but it's like a separate game mode thing but by framing it as a patch to dragonflight they set an expectation of broad appeal and that was a mistake they did not hedge their bets because the funny thing is we've now found out they have this other thing called pandemonium coming out um not ff uh, panda as in like panda the you know cute creatures that are very bad at reproducing and love bamboo um so it's some mists of pandaria pve related event and there are well holly longdale the uh, executive vice producer of wow and jeremy fiesel the associate game director of wow they're talking about plunderstorm and pandemonium sort of in the same breath so they actually do have a pve thing so for all the people who were made really angry and felt underserved and felt like they were made to get excited for a patch that, because like Blizzard didn't tell people Plunderstorm was coming. They said, ooh, there's something to do with pirates and it's a grand mystery. And I kind of did love the mystery, but they didn't, you know, they didn't sandbag things, did they? They didn't hedge their bets because they should have known. And I'm pretty sure they all did know, like at least devs and probably community people knew, like, yeah, this is a really cool mode, and I, you know, we're down for the experimentation, but this is PvP. You're going to have an audience mismatch here. But they didn't hedge their bets. If they had have said, the first thing is a PvEVP thing, and the next thing, you know, we have a PvE thing as well. Don't worry. We're going to try hard. we got some cool experiments. We don't want to tell you everything about them. We want them to be a bit special, and uh, yeah, the patch will happen. I don't think that that would have killed hype or killed marketing. It would have set expectations because you see when you set expectations right, 
you are making sure the climate, the weather of your, your game, of your scene is good. And you can have a good harvest when the weather is good. And this is, and I know sometimes it's like, Michael, could you please stop talking in analogies? And I, you know, I do actually sort of, you know, I understand that, but I think it's, it's like a, it's, it's a good idea. You know, um, if you're always going super, super hard on your marketing all the time, but you're not willing to sandbag things, you're not willing to hedge your bets. Uh, you're, you know, you're not, you're not fully aware or you're not prepared to deal with the fact that like the thing that you're doing, that not everybody will love it. Those things can damage the climate. And that means that when the time comes for the thing to release, your harvest won't be as good. And that will hurt your word of mouth. And because this is something that I think would appeal to people way beyond the current World of Warcraft audience, but it's locked behind the sub and there hasn't been a free weekend. Perfect example of a bag fumbled. Because I can certainly say, I absolutely love this mode. I do not think that it, uh, I, I'm actually completely fine with it being a six week long event because its design is clearly not, it doesn't have the longevity to be more than that. You kind of will see and do everything and it will get old. But if they were to do this and then say, okay, we've learned something, let us cook. And then they do a proper big full mode. I mean, then I am totally down, you know? And if they do this within regular WoW where I can do this in my character, like I don't even mind if it's classless or even if it does have a class, but it massively simplifies it. In Final Fantasy XIV, they did a really cool thing with Crystalline Conflict. So if you're playing a red mage, right? You got all your buttons. If you go into Crystalline Conflict, all of your buttons get squished into just a few buttons. And it's actually really amazing because they basically give you this, you know, beautiful, uh, rich, creamy, fast-paced, like, reduction of your class into a few basic buttons so that you're then playing an almost, like, fast-paced MOBA uh, version of FF. And it's awesome there, and it would be awesome in WoW. And I think this is just so much more accessible and approachable and naturally interesting to people who are outside of regular World of Warcraft that I am willing to call this... One of the most fumbled bags, but one of the, remember, a bag, we only talk about a bag that has been fumbled. If fundamentally, we like what it contained. And that's the thing. In this bag, there is gold. There are nuggets of gold. The problem is the bag is now on the floor. And, uh, you know, a few, you know, somebody's came in and stolen the gold. And it's probably not going to be as impactful as it could be. What I would say, though, is, the, you know, this experimental gameplay team, they they may just accidentally modernize WoW's game feel and have an extremely positive impact. Hell, Season of Discovery is already doing that. So I just thought this was a really interesting story. And the reason why I wanted to talk about it today um, on this channel is I think it's newsworthy. I'm doing it on the Bellular News channel instead of our Warcraft channel because I want to see what a broader not World of Warcraft audience actually thinks about this kind of thing. I uh, really want to hear what your guys' uh, you know reactions and opinions are. And uh, I just think that this is a strong little encapsulation of so many of the things that we talk about here on a regular basis about you know just how rewards are done you know the psychology of things the marketing i just thought it was an amazing case study so that's basically that's what the deal is i thought it was interesting maybe you do either right though oh boy come back to this channel in about 16 hours recording this on Sunday. I hope I'll be able to post this on Sunday. And my God, I know I have two videos queued up for Monday. Going to record one of them soon. And boy, howdy, it's a spicy time. Thank you for dropping by. Hope you found this to be a fun chat. And I'll see you tomorrow.